be volume six, episode 12, Seeing Red. So <clears throat> what a crazy episode. Um, to quote another popular animated series, uh, Last Airbender, uh, the boulder is conflicted because this episode, they seemingly kill Adam. We'll see what happens. Um, cause it's, you know, it's always that sort of thing. Like if you don't see it, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, sadly, you know, at this point it's been technically years within the series. So I was like, I don't, you know, I think it's a bit late for Roman to be making a return. Still wouldn't hate it. I like the guy. Uh, so kind of the same rule applies to Adam, but like tenfold, because I mentioned before, like the last two episodes, I really didn't want him to die. I was like, I would love it if they beat him and he was captured or something like that. And you know, we found a way to get the backstory as to how he was branded and stuff, which I thought would, personally, I felt it would make more sense to keep him alive, to have that story play out where he's the one that tells it, or, you know, someone else happens to tell it to a character, and then, you know, maybe they have that moment where they go back to him, like, I now know how you got that scar or something, but, man, it was a good episode. Even with that moment happening, it was still great, but to go through the episode like we did last time i'll start with the first half where we have the rest of our teams um fighting off you know this giant mech and of course it works uh, by the end they ultimately end up surviving and it was pretty sweet it was a pretty good plan um oscar had his first half where i was like all right so you know the dust locks in the place but the missiles stick out so if ruby can get a shot off close enough she can hit it it'll blow up all the missiles destroy the entire arm that unfortunately ends up failing and so then Ruby realizes after they've kind of been grounded that if she's able to get uh, Calavera to actually, you know, kind of shoot at her, she can jump into the cannon and shoot the dust because it's locked in place. So she ends up doing that and she jumps out, takes her aura down. We actually see that a couple of times in this episode. We see like three different people, um, excuse me, have their aura completely deplete. Or actually four people because all three people did in um, Adam Yang and Blake's fight. All three of them have their aura deplete at a certain point. But... It was really cool. I was like, all right, that was a genius idea. And it was, you know, how they referenced it where it was like, yeah, you know, the dust locks in the place, but the missile stick out. The missile thing failed. So she was like, all right, well, I, you know, I can jump in and then I'll just jump right out. And so, of course, that's what she does. Complete success. You know, it like ice and uh, rocks like shoot out and it keeps it, you know, grounded. And I thought that was awesome. I was like, all right, well, that's super cool. I was like, all right, cool. Great. And then uh, things get super crazy, you know, at the very end of the episode. But, you know, once again, we'll kind of go through the line of the episode. But they end up defeating it. It's like, all right, cool. You know, we kind of did it. And then it cuts to, personally, once again, the main point of this episode for me. And that is Adam, Blake, and Yang. And it was so good. Like, the action was good. Like I mentioned, uh, one of my main things was, like, I always wished Adam was, like, a good guy. Because you see the heroes fight much more often than you see the villains fight. Um, especially in Adam's case. But I was like, man... He's such a fun character to watch. He's one of my favorite characters to watch fight because no one else fights like him. Like, he is a very different style of fighter. Like, it's an odd version of speed and strength where, you know, I think I mentioned this in my last review, he's similar to Yang. Of course, you know, their powers are also very similar. And so they can do certain things that make them stronger in Yang's case. But in Adam's case, he can become faster. He can become stronger. He can, you know, make like seismic waves depending on how much energy he uses. So there's a huge difference in their abilities and it's just fun to watch him do stuff. Like in the, you know, if you go back to the trailer, he charges up a bunch of power to like destroy uh, the giant mech that he and Blake end up fighting. And he does like one big slash and like he completely disintegrates the thing. And it's like, well, that's super cool. Like you won't see Yang do that. Like she can punch something super hard and depending on whether or not it's a person or a thing, it can, you know, shatter, but it just doesn't look as cool. Maybe it's just the whole samurai aesthetic for me and I just like it more, but it's like, you don't get that from Yang's character or any character for that matter. And with Blake is super fun or with Adam, it's super fun. And even in this episode, he did something we never saw him do, which is where he fights using um, the katana as well as the sheath. And he kind of uses them like a double-sided sword when he's fighting Yang at the very end. And he's flipping it around and stuff. And he'll use like the you know, he was swinging them together and then it was basically like he was holding them as if they were like a double-sided blade. And I was like, well, that's cool. We haven't seen him do that before. So got to see a lot of epic stuff from him, which may or may not be the end of it because uh, he's going through the fight. Even with the two of them teaming up, he's still able to take them down. And, you know, he takes Blake down. She loses her aura. So she's climbing on the mountains in the background as Yang uh, goes for like the final blow. And so they're, you know, going blow for blow, blow for blow back and forth. And... As things play out, you know, Adam's still losing it. Like, his whole thing is about how Blake made the same promise to him and how she never kept it. And he's delusional, so he doesn't truly understand it. And so they're going through, they're having their fight, super epic fight scene. And 
it gets to the point where Yang finally utilizes her semblance. Because I was kind of waiting, because I think I mentioned in my last review, once again, I thought that's what she was going to do during the scene where he does the big seismic wave. I thought she was going to like take the blow, and that was going to be like the moment where she's like, all right, boom, I got it. And she was going to take him down. But instead, she knew what she had to do. Like She couldn't go on the offense for this fight. Like She had to stay on defense and kind of go on offense when she was actually teamed up with Blake. But once she was out of the picture, and it was just one-on-one -on -one again, Yang was like, all right, I kind of have to bide my time and wait for my moment where he's kind of slowed down and I can read what movie he's going to make. And that's when she gets the final punch in because she blocks uh, the wave and it's dusty and he can't see. So when he swings, she just grabs it with the arm, of course, that he cut off. So fairly poetic. She grabs it. She's like, I got you. And it was cool to see because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is legitimately the first time we ever see her do... Um, you know, her red eyes mode with her semblance in with the new animation style. So I was like, well, that's super cool. Um, Cause it's been a minute. You know, I was watching some of the old stuff recently showing my friend like the beginning cause she never watched the show. I was like, man, it's funny how it's just like an anime. Like you have certain character traits that eventually just fade out over time. Like the hair thing for Yang isn't really a thing anymore, but we hadn't seen her power uh, really utilized in quite a while. So it was cool to at least see it for a second. You know, her actually using her red eyes and uh, the glowing hair and stuff like that so she punches the crap out of him he basically forms like a little path in the ground like a crater his aura is gone he doesn't know what to do he reaches for his katana which i thought was super cool because it shows that mentality of his character where it's like it's always there it's always you know it, it's just an extension of him like he is that sort of thing where like his weapon is just another part of his body and he didn't even pay attention he was looking right at her and he's just like Oh crap! And like he, you know, he's looking right at her, and he didn't even it didn't even process for his character because that's what he's like. So great moment, and Yang throws it off the cliff. So that kind of ruled out a big theory that a lot of people had. Some people mentioned it um, in the comments of my last review that Yang and Blake would probably end up defeating Adam, and then Blake would end up taking his katana. And I thought that would be cool because I'm like I would love to see that if Blake ended up getting Adam's weapon, and then she had to change her style because she'd be switching. You know, it would be a totally different type of blade as well as a different type of gun mechanic with the shotgun. I still think that would have been awesome because she's so agile. It would have had she would have to switch her style up, but unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Yang throws the katana off the cliff. Um, Adam goes for it. Blake comes up with the shuriken, and then they team up on him, and they stab him. And it was just like two ways. You know, it was you know crisscross applesauce. He's dead. Like he should be for sure. And so Blake stabs him in the front. And Yang stabs him in the back, and it was just like, man, he's like, you know, it was one of those visceral moments. Like, we don't get him too often, but it was like, they showed that blade go through his back and come out his front, and it was like covered in blood. And I was like, this is it. This is, this is gone, gone. This isn't like a swallowed whole type Roman thing. This is like, he was stabbed through, two, you know, two different directions. And then so, you know, Yang pulls it out, then Blake pulls it out. And so he stumbles forward, drops to his knees. He has a little, you know, kind of dead eye stare. And then he just falls down. He you know falls over the cliff, and that's kind of the big speculation. You know, it's all in the comments where it's like, you know, he could come back. He might not come back. I would love for him to come back because it would be great, personally, because I I love his character. I didn't want him to die, as I mentioned a million times over. I wanted him to keep living because I like his character. I didn't even if it wasn't you know as far as redemption wise, even if he stayed as a villain and he was just imprisoned. I would have been fine with that because I like his character that much. And eventually he could escape. You know, he officially teams up with Cinder and the other villains. Sure. And in this case, if he came back, it would be really hard to believe. Because it's like he got stabbed through twice. He fell into the water. His aura was gone. So that's another element. It's like, it's not like, okay, well, they can say like, oh, he had his aura kind of protecting him or whatever. His aura was gone. He was stabbed through uh, he did the Spider-Man move at the very end, which someone even commented, like, he, his final words were the, the great words of William Defoe, uh, where he's just like, oh, and, you know, he dies. But I thought that was super funny, because that's the first thing I thought of, too, with Spider-Man, when he gets stabbed, and he's like, oh, and I was like, that definitely makes me think of Spider-Man. Um, the very first one for anyone who might be confused. But it was so good. It was just a great moment. It was just, I was like, crap, I love this, but I also kind of hate it, because I wanted Adam to live. But ultimately, we end up seeing what happens there. I I think it was good. I, I think it was a good decision to go this route. I mean, it makes sense to have them, like, officially kill off this guy who really was stalking them, especially in Blake's case. Like, he was literally stalking her across the planet. And so they have that unified moment where they finally, you know, they band together, Blake and Yang, of course, and they take down this obstacle that 
not only brings them together, but it was the obstacle that was tearing them apart because they had to figure out how to be around each other um, in an emotional sense. Like when Blake says, like, you know, I'll be there to protect you and stuff, and Yang got pissed off. It was that element where they had to even figure out how to be friends still, not just because, like, oh, it's been a minute since we saw each other. It was because, you know, it was like, man, I wasn't there to protect you as a friend, and Yang, you know, was wounded and, you know, was totally distraught. So it was a very interesting dynamic what he caused for two of the main characters. But for them to kill him off, it was like, it's poetic. That's how it should be. You know, you have both characters. And I like the way they did it, too, because visually they have it where Blake picks up her half of the blade and Yang is shown as the first one about to stab. But Blake is the one that actually stabs first. So I, th I thought that was kind of cool how they went back and forth. It was like Blake picked it up first. Yang was going in for the stab. And then they show Blake go in for the stab and she gets the stab first. And then Yang comes in and stabs him through the back. And I was like, that's pretty interesting. Uh, symbolically like you know it makes sense to have Blake be the first one to get him and then for Yang to be the one to deliver I guess technically like the final blow so I thought it was cool you know it made sense like that first strike was a long time coming and that last one was just like the final push you know to end such a devastating you know catalyst for both these characters so I like the way they did that but all in all I loved it I still want him to be alive and it's just one of those things where it's like I like the character so much I'd probably be like, bad writing gets a pass in that. Like him coming back, they'd have to have a great freaking reason. And depending on how things go in this next episode with the way they ended it, where it's like, oh crap, we have, you know, Godzilla coming in from the ocean and then, a, you know, a bunch of the like griffins and stuff coming at them. Um, we'll see how it plays out, but they might show something. There might be a glimpse, a hint or a clue somewhere in there where it's like, oh, look at this person who is off near the water or something random like that i don't know if they'll do it um i don't know what else they could do i mean once again he was stabbed through his body you know no aura it just ran right through like he should have been dead instantly i mean they stabbed him basically through both his lungs like it was pretty insane and like you know magically missed his heart because he should have just dropped him straight down but it was like okay stab him right through takes a couple steps falls down like basically hits his back um, the shotgun falls off, the shotgun sheath falls off, so he hits the water, it hits the water after him. And it's just like, alright, he's in the water. And that's all there is to it. We don't even see the blade actually hit the ground, or, you know, hit the water, wherever it landed. So, I just assume that that's in the water with him. And he's just kind of carried out, because they were basically right by the waterfall, so he'd be carried out into the, the you know, the wider ocean. So, I don't know. They could easily show something like, surprise, you know, somebody picks them up or some random crap like that, but I just don't know. And I doubt they would show that because it would be too obvious after such an insane moment. You don't show that sort of thing. It's kind of the reveal that you give later and you just make up an answer if they decide to bring them back. They haven't done it with Roman yet and they kind of just keep it going even though it's like, oh man, it easily swallowed whole but maybe could have survived. In this case, it's even less likely. Stabbed through twice, no aura, hits his back, falls in the water. He should be dead. But if he came back, I'd be like, you know what? I love him. So <laughs> give him a pass. Give him a pass for bad writing. I would totally do it for Adam's character. But I think this should. Writing-wise, my writer side says this should be it. That should be the end of Adam. And, you know, we can get more of him. Because technically, I personally feel like we should totally get that flashback of his character just to see the transition of what did make him go evil and that's why that's another element that's like man they could totally bring him back and then you kind of forget about like the crappy reason he came back if they did it well because then it's like all right well here's literally the beginning of what made him evil and it's how he got that scar and stuff like that so i don't know we'll see what happens you know maybe a couple of volumes down the line i don't think it'll be anytime soon where they if they you know even decide to do that i don't think it would be anytime soon but it sucks to see him go. I still, personally speaking, feel like we didn't get nearly enough of his character. As much as he's shown in the openings for, like, I think it was Volume 2 as well as Volume 3, um, just not enough. Like, it just, it just wasn't enough for his character. Um, right? No, I think it was Volume 3 and Volume 4, and possibly even Volume 5, and he was at least in that quite a bit. But for Volume 4, you know, they tease it in the opening, and then there's, like, Volume 2 where they tease stuff, or Volume 3, sorry. And it's just like, yeah, he never got nearly enough time like i felt like and i would say the same with raven and i hope that eventually we get something with her um going to see uh ty so we'll see what happens ultimately but crazy episode and then you know i, I think we all know what's going to happen in the next one i mean ruby's just going to be like all right 
I got this. Bam, you're frozen. Bam, they're eviscerated. A couple of people will die before she's able to like truly get it down. Um, but, <laughs> but ultimately, I think that's what will happen. She'll freeze it. Um, probably wipe away the smaller creatures, freeze the big one, then I'll have a giant Godzilla statue now, so that'll be cool. And then we'll, you know, they'll be able to go off to Atlas because everyone will be like, well, they're heroes, and Calavera's insane because she decided to use a mech on like eight people and one tiny ship when she could have been like, hey, send out three ships and blow that one out of the sky. Would have been done, but she's, she's legitimately crazy because there was no reason she needed to do all of that just to kill them off. And she was going to kill like, like a, a young girl at like point blank range with a giant mech cannon and she was just gonna eviscerate her and just blow out the side of a mountain just to kill this little girl just because like a woman who had some cashews one time and they stole a ship so she's crazy so i just don't know she'll probably still blame them even afterwards like it's all your fault even though uh ruby had that speech where it's like we wouldn't have done this if you just let us kind of carry out our mission but all in all, really enjoyed the episode. Naturally, we'd love to know what you guys thought about it, so please put your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, and naturally, what did you guys think of Adam's death? Did you want him to die? Do you think he's officially dead? Like, if he came back, I would love to know how you would write it. Like, what would be a good reason for them to say, like, he actually survived this? Because they would have to make up a flashback, and I just don't think it would work because no one's in that city yet, and the villains that are going to atlas would be going straight to atlas they would have no reason to stop in the city unless they're like oh well we can't go to atlas because of this so we might see the villain show up because they have to make a pit stop because there's a buttload of grim and they have to take him down i'm not 100 percent sure uh, i don't even know if they have to fight him that's something that i've still wondered like does salem have enough control over all grim on the planet or is that not a thing because i've always wondered like would they be able to just like walk past a bunch of grim but the heroes have to fight because i don't think they really kind of answered that question yet but either way one of your predictions on the whole Adam thing, what you thought about it, good, bad, happy, sad, is he dead, is he going to come back later, would it be stupid if he did, do you not care if it's stupid that he comes back, and of course, in general, want to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please put your comments down in the comment section below, and of course, thanks for watching.